tone exercises. If you're not already incorporating core tone exercises into your daily practice routine, then you should be. They're a fantastic exercise and personally, they've really helped me develop as a player. Core tone exercises are a great way to get to grips with the chords in a new jazz standard that you're learning. It's so important to be able to play the chord tones as these will act as the framework to build your solos around. You can think of chord tones as the safe notes, which you know definitely won't clash with the underlying chords. And building your solos around these chord tones will give you a very nice melodic sound. So what are chord tones? Chord tones are the notes which make up a chord. And when I say chord tones in this video, I'm referring to the first, third, fifth, and seventh notes of the scale. For example, for an F major seven chord, the chord tones would be F, A, C, and E. These are the first, third, fifth, and seventh notes of an F major scale. And for an A dominant chord, the chord tones would be A, C sharp, E, and G. These are also the first, third, fifth, and seventh notes of an A mixolydian scale. You get the idea. We're gonna use the first eight bars of There Will Never Be Another You as an example in this video. In this popular jazz standard, there's a mixture of major seven, minor seven, dominant, and minor seven flat five chords, also known as half diminished chords. So make sure you're familiar with your basic jazz scales before you attempt this exercise. Here are the first eight bars of There Will Never Be Another You. The chord tones are as follows. F major seven for two bars, E minor seven flat five or E half diminished, A dominant, D minor seven for two bars, C minor seven and lastly F dominant. These chords are from the B flat real book, just in case you're used to looking at the concert pitch or E flat version. Next, we're gonna remove the melody line and write out the chord tones. So here you can see the chord tones written out under the chords. Where a chord is played over two bars, I've simply repeated the chord tones. I'm gonna demo playing the chord tones over a backing track now. To start with, I'm just gonna demonstrate playing them as straight crutchets or quarter notes. The next step is slightly more advanced. This time, we're still gonna play the same notes, but we're gonna play the rhythm slightly differently. For this, we're gonna play swung quavers or eighth notes, and then hold the seventh of the chord for the rest of the bar. If we write out the chord tones using this new rhythm, it looks like this. The reason we want to play the rhythm like this is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, this allows us to continue playing the exercise when there are two chords in one bar. I know this doesn't happen in this particular example, but it does happen all the time in other jazz standards. Secondly, it gets us used to playing swung quavers, which is, you know, a bit more realistic when we're actually soloing or improvising. I'm gonna demo playing the chord tones over a backing track now using this new rhythm. To challenge yourself further, there are loads of different variations of this exercise that you can do. You can start to make it super advanced if you want to. For example, you can play the chord tones of different chord inversions. In this video, I've demonstrated playing the root position of the chord, one, three, five, seven. You might mix things up and play the chord tones for the first inversion, the second inversion, or even the third inversion of the chords. Another idea is to play the chord tones using different patterns. For example, instead of playing one, three, five, seven, like I've demonstrated in this video, you could reverse the order and play down the chord tones, seven, five, three, one. Or you could pick a more random pattern like one, five, three, seven. The possibilities are almost endless and you can make this exercise as advanced as you want. Eventually, you want to be able to look at any chord and instantly be able to play the chord tones, up and down without thinking. 
This will take time to get the hang of, especially if you don't play an instrument like piano or guitar, where you're used to playing chords all the time. But trust me, this exercise will improve your playing hugely. If you did find this video useful, then please drop me a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this one. Thanks so much for listening. See you next time.